Well, I'll tell you, there's a, you know, you talk about culture and how it affects people. You know that phrase, let's go Dutch? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it comes from Scandinavian culture where women don't expect men to do things for them. Yeah. It's 50-50. Right. And because it's 50-50, it's 50-50 head to toe. If you go on a date, it's 50-50. And mm -hmm. so when, when you when you treat a woman, a woman nice in Scandinavia, there's a level of like, oh, I really appreciate that. You know what I mean? Right. I think I think I was I was exotic to her. Like a, a, a can of Bud Light is, is two bucks in the States, but it's six bucks over here because it's right. an export. I felt like a can of Bud Light. Like she appreciated me and she liked me. I was exotic to her. She was exotic to me. Hey, yo, yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Tamer Katan. He's here, and we discuss dating women international, t internationally, t talking, taking crazy risks in, in relationships, where the anxieties come from, fear, and why relationships work out better in Europe, what the different the different uh, culture and how, and how culture affects that. This is a really good one. Yeah, um, it's he, a fun one. You yeah, got some good stories from Tamer. He's got some interesting stories, so it's worth hearing. You're going to be hooked with the crazy story and how he got married. Uh, but if you love the show, please support us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. Patreon.com is where we do all the bonus content and uh, listener mail. And, you know, you, it, supporting it helps support us and keep this show going because it, it takes some doing. Uh, this week's bonus show is we continue our conversation with uh, Tamer Katan. And also, uh, we answer a listener mail question, and we end up talking a lot about appropriate anger. So if you uh, love the show, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202. And also, I, uh, I do relationship consultations. You can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. I also want to shout out the uh, the Patreon people. Sure, let's shout do out it. All the new people, Bilal, Aslam, um, Kagoshi, Sergeant, Edward, Emmanuel, Jeremiah Oliva, Edward Stewart, Jonathan Ag Augustin, Zaire Wright, Keith Cavalier, Cavalier, and John Attenbury. Thank y'all all for supporting this man. We really appreciate this. Um, thanks a lot, man. Uh, keep listening. We'll keep putting the content out. And don't forget to uh, send the email questions in oh, if you're a Patreon. Listen, quick thing before I forget. I forgot to mention it during the last shows. All everybody asking, hey, where are the old episodes of the Beige Phillips show, Man School 202? Before it was, uh, we were the Beige Phillips show at first. Where are those 200 episodes? Patreon.com is where we're putting those episodes up. So you'll get access to the full archive. Uh, we're releasing episodes every day now. So join patreon.com slash Man School 202. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just want to let them know. Yeah, That's well, what I'm they get over up. at Patreon. I'm glad they're getting up. Appreciate y'all. Let's get at it. I'm not an alpha male, I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution's being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, it's a funny thing. I say the sexual revolution's being podcasted, but I feel like the, the it's, it's, I don't know if it's the sexual revolution anymore. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, well, what kind of revolution is it then? What are you I, saying? I, I don't know. Is it maybe gender revolution? I mean, you got to be real comf co be careful about the terms, you know? Mm. I don't know. Um, but I still say sexual revolution because we're trying to redefine the sexual, uh, the, the dynamics of uh, sexuality, male, female, yeah. or otherwise. Here's what I do know. We're going to be talking about some pussy. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing guaranteed. You do have a hundred percent pussy guarantee uh, pussy on the guarantee. podcast. How you good, Harry? What's going I'm on? doing you great, man. I'm I'm living my best life, trying to trying to elevate myself each day. Some days are better than others, but each day I'm trying. So that's all that matters. <laughs> um, let me introduce the uh, the guest, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's a, a England and ba Barcelona. Do you say with a list? That's right. Barcelona. London and Barcelona, you got it, you got Barcelona, it. Barcelona, comedian, and was here, Barcelona. met him here years ago. Good friend of mine, very, 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 very funny dude, Tamer Catan. Yo, what's going on, yo? Thank you, brother. It's good to see you. Uh, same here, man. Same here. Absolutely. Um, it's it's good. To, the mustache is getting real porny. 
<laughs> it is, man. I look like a dictator. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is a cigar. It's over, bro. You get. <laughs> oh man, it's Forget funny. Yeah. Pen- <laughs> you do look like either a dictator or you should be commentating commentating on uh, Spanish language soccer. Either way, it's it's coming in. That's a pretty good stash. Then again, right dic- dictators wear orange right now, so I don't know. I don't Dude, know. is that is that a thing? Yeah, That's they wear funny. they have they're orange. Dictators are orange. It's good to see here. You been how you been? How you been? How's good? I've been great, man. It's been it's been a hustle, but it's good. I finally got to a got to a point out here after two years where I feel like I got my career back. Nice post nice. post post pandemic life change, but it's it's going good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. How you still with your lady? Still with the lady. Things are working. It's That's great. Dope. That's dope. Yeah, All man. right. So I guess yeah. we'll just end the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's hey, your lady? You... Where's your lady from originally? Did she make th- she made this big move with you? No, man. This is wild. So during the pandemic, I was quarantining in Lower East Side, and then Bumble had this feature called Passport, where you could put yourself in any city in the world. And man, like when I was quarantining, it was a way for me to travel mentally. I could put mm-hmm. myself. So I put myself in Barcelona because that's where I was meant to be. And then like first day there, I met a Swedish woman and she had a tattoo on her forearm that said, it's good to be the king from the Mel Brooks film. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, that's a B-side comedy. Let's right, see what right, she's right. all about. And we clicked like in a way that I haven't clicked with anybody ever. And I think partially because I wasn't looking, I didn't think I was going to meet anybody. You know, I was just looking for a way to travel. I really wasn't there to, I didn't think I was going to meet anybody because we're all locked up in our houses. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she, you meet each other. Now how, you end up moving there. I mean, where in Bar- this is in Barcelona, you said. Dude, this is a wild story. So this is the first summer when they said, if you already had COVID, you can travel. So I had a letter from my doctor saying I already had COVID and recovered. I get to Barcelona the day I'm there. They stop me at the airport and they're like, no, you can't come in. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Here's my paperwork. And they're like, oh, man, we changed the law yesterday. Oh, and I was wow. like, what? I'm like, I was in the air yesterday. And they're like, no, but you had a layover in London. And even though it was only half an hour, technically, you were coming from another country. And we've since closed our doors. So then they made me spend the night in jail. And then the next day flew me straight back. Wait, wait, to in the jail? Yeah, in jail, man. They did they lock the, the door or did they? Lock the door. Absolutely. It was It was wild. It was wild. They locked the door, locked me in this little jail cell. Uh, the next day, they put me on the airplane like I was Hannibal Lecter. Like the plane was full, and then two cops drove me in an armored vehicle onto the plane, handed my passport to the stewardess, and then w- and then they wouldn't even give me my passport. So I got to London, and the stewardess got off the plane with me and walked me to border control and gave them my passport. It was wild. So it wasn't until like two weeks later I met her in Gibraltar, which was like this little town. Well, it's it's a piece of Spanish soil that's owned by the British. Okay. So it's like a really tense piece of land, but it was small enough to where there was no COVID deaths, and it was probably the last place on on European soil that was letting Americans in. So we met there, and I I didn't know this at the time, but Gibraltar is like the Las Vegas of Europe. So we got married the first first day we met. I asked her to marry me, and we got we got married two weeks later in Gibraltar. What made you do that? You know what? It was wild times, man. And the only way they couldn't separate us was if we got, I knew if we got married and and both of us were like, well, if we're married, they can't separate us. The laws don't apply because we're tech, we become family. So we did it because we'd been speaking every day, six hours a day because we're both quarantined. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're in Gibraltar, (laughs) right? Yeah. You're in Gibraltar. You meet up with her, right? Yeah. Yeah. You haven't, you haven't slept with her yet. Yes. No, so here when we met, we spoke for like six weeks, but yeah. we were speaking for like hours every day. In a way, I've never spoken to a chick because I'd never been quarantining before. So right. we spoke for hours and hours and hours. Then she said, hey, this first summer, my flatmate is gone. He's living in Germany. Why don't you come stay in this spare room for the summer? We'll get to know each other. So I said, OK. But then when I got there, all that madness happened. So then in the next two weeks, we were talking about how to be together. And, you know, we kind of shared how we feel about each other and then we said let's meet in gibraltar and when we met there at first uh you know we we found out about being able to get married there and we thought like if you get married they can't separate us and so i asked her and she said yeah now again the question was (laughs) did you sleep with her yet 
Oh, no, I had it. No, and we even said, we said, hey, let's not, let's not have, since we're in this unique situation, let's wait till we get married. This is like really? relationship skydiving here. Yeah, right. Oh man, this that's what it was, bro. Here. And listen, I've done, I've taken crap shoots before and they've never worked out. Right. I've, right. I've done Hail Marys. Nice this to see you. This is a Hail you, Mary. You learned your lesson. <laughs> right? Exactly, man. I'm stupid. Jeez. But it worked. I mean, and I how long is that? How, how long ago was that? How long have you been together? Three, three years, man. This summer will be three years. You're married three years. Three years. Wow. But we have a wild situation. She lives in Barcelona, so we have an apartment in Barcelona. And that's where she lives. The Barcelona scene is too small, comedy wise. It's English speaking comedy. So mm-hmm. what happens? She lives here. I have a place in London. Two weeks a month, I'm in London, and then one week a month I come here, and then one week a month she comes back to London. So it's like we live in two different countries, but we're married. And oh, that's we just that might make it work. I like that a lot. I'm telling you, man, it's yeah. fantastic. It's like we're still dating. Things are fresh. It, yeah. It's cool. I get to, well, I get to chase my dream. You know, she's what not happens mad at me. is straight. sometimes you, even with somebody you love immensely, after a while you go, I got nothing to say to you. It, 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 only that's because right. you go, I didn't, you know, like, hey, how was your day? Like, I didn't do anything since the last time I saw you. You know, all the stories that happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was, at work too. I don't have all, I don't have any new stories, you know, and that's the, that's the type of thing is like when you do everything together, there's sort of this thing of like, you're, there's nobody talking becomes hard sometimes. I find. Yeah. hundred percent. And you dude, know. when you're a comedian and on the road, I knew that if I, if I lost my career, I would resent her. And she knew that if I was on the road and she was around her friends when I was gone, she'd resent me. Yeah. So the compromise was she gets to be around all her friends when I'm on the road. Right. And then I get to still do this thing that makes me that that's my air. How far is London from Barcelona? It's an hour and a half flight. It's easy peasy. Hour and a half flight. Oh, that's like going upstate. Exactly. That's the best thing about Europe, man. I mean, I'll I'll perform in London on a Friday night before in Paris on a Saturday night, coming back in London on a Sunday. And that's that's on the train. So it's great. I mean, that part of Europe is. I feel like I'm getting the wildest education because I'm just now, like. Is there is every all the comedies in English? Yeah, exactly. That's the crazy thing about COVID. It, like it's weird, man. You know, we've been quarantining, so it's like when a caterpillar goes in a cocoon, it doesn't come out a caterpillar. The scene changed dramatically in Europe. So what happened is co- companies got serious about people being able to work remotely. So all these expat cities started to grow. Cities where it was cheap to live but you can work remotely in another country and live in places like, like Lisbon, like Barcelona, like Budapest, Hungary. So all of a sudden there's thousands of English speaking people almost overnight that all live in these cities now. So and now, it wasn't, and now it wasn't like that before the COVID. It, it was, but not, it didn't reach this tipping point. And because of meetup groups and Facebook groups, and all of a sudden you had these people living in cities and looking for friendship and looking mm-hmm. for shit to do. So then the comics started getting better about using online marketing, using things like meetup apps, Facebook groups. And then we were like, I mean, shit, man, the first summer I got COVID five times because I had to make money. So I was, I got, I got, you just out in those streets. You got it, man. I was like, (laughs) I was like an outdoor cat with an indoor collar. I was, I was was getting all kinds of street diseases, man. But I I got jabbed four times, but I had COVID five times. And uh, we would like find venues where the cities were that had the expat communities and then put up chairs and lights and mics and just set up everything guerrilla style. Now, were you working with a crew or was just you you doing it yourself or you meet up with a bunch of comics or was it a a production company or was it just you kind of helping a product? Like, what was the dynamic? So in in the beginning, Barcelona, I got lucky, Barcelona, uh, Barcelona and Spain don't like each other. Like okay. Barcelona is an area of Spain called Catalonia and Catalonians are like these fierce independent people and they don't like Spain. So like Spain will say, Hey, we have COVID lockdown and Catalonia will say, no, we don't not in Barcelona, Barcelona. You can have events as long as it's cultural. So we had this one theater that sat 600 people, but they let us put on comedy shows once a week for 80. And so Barcelona became the spot where a lot of people were coming through and me and two other comedians got together and we started putting on shows once a week through the whole pandemic. And then we figured out how to use like, you know, Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing, 
and then started, you know, just getting together, the three of us and working together to put on tours. Wow. That's crazy. It was wild, man. It was wild. So we were three headliners. We'd pop into a city, do 30 minutes each and blow them away. And then that way, two months later, we could each take, take turns going back doing solos. But then when we went back, we went back to a warm audience that knew us. Oh, so they'd wow. only seen 30, and then, and then I'd go back and they could see my hour. Wow, that's crazy. That's pretty brilliant. Uh, you seem to leave, you wild. seem to be a very adventurous guy. Yeah. Well, you're Thanks always that, that way? You're no, always you know, that way? I, I'll tell you, I think it was by default, man. I was a, we moved to America when I was eight years old from Egypt. And in Egypt, my mom used to always joke that I was treated like a prince. And then we got to America and people were like, Egypt, what's that? You know, they didn't, <laughs> people didn't really have a lot of respect for what Egypt was, you know? Mm. And so I was, I think a lot of it was me just trying to find friends again, was being, you know, rocked from one place where I was loved to be in another place where suddenly I was a, their definition of a nerd. Mm. So it, for me, it was like, that's how I made friends. I was willing to take, take big swings. Now, it, it, does that, does that, well, clearly, I mean, you got married yeah. on the first day that you, <laughs> yeah, so that's that, a pretty man. big swing. That In all fairness, Dante, swing. let's not get crazy. He got engaged on the first day. He oh. didn't get married until True. a little right. bit after. So let's How not get nuts. How long after did you get married? Let's not get nuts. Well, that's, that's the other wild thing. We waited on the island because Sweden is so progressive that her birth certificate was digital. So they said, no, no, we need the original birth certificate. That's all you need is a birth certificate and a passport to get married. Mm. So we had it. But because of COVID, even FedEx and DHL took forever. So we were meant to stay on that island for like a few days. We stayed for two and a half weeks wow. waiting for waiting for a passport. I would literally uh, go on a hike to the airport every day to the cargo section to walk into this little FedEx like garage and wait and see if the package arrived mm. for two and a half weeks until we finally were able to get married. It's crazy. It's now, crazy. I mean, is this the first type of uh, adventurous thing you did relationship wise or how have your past relationships been? I mean, I'd, nothing like this. This was different. You know, I think that the reason why I think it worked is because we we're both full, full grown adults. She knew who she was. She knew what her life, what made her happy, what made her not happy. And I and I do. I need the same. And man, I don't think I've ever met anyone and for the first few months of getting to know each other, we spoke to each other and each other only for like six hours a day. Mm. But I wasn't, I wasn't dating multiple chicks during the pandemic. I was talking to her and only her. So we right. really got to know, know each other in a deep way. It was like yeah. we were in a jail cell together, a virtual right. jail cell. We got to really know each other. Right. What do you and think was the, different about her? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was different about her than, than other women in the past that made you so smitten? Well, I'll tell you, there's a, you know, you talk about culture and how it affects people. You know, that phrase, let's go Dutch. Yeah. yeah. It, com it comes from Scandinavian culture where women don't expect men to do things for them. Yeah. It's 50, 50. Right. And because it's 50, 50, it's 50, 50 head to toe. If you go on a date, it's 50, 50. And mm -hmm. so when, when you, when you treat a woman, a woman nice in Scandinavia, there's a level of like, oh, I really appreciate that. You know what I mean? Right. I think, I think I was. I was exotic to her. Like a, a, a can of Bud Light is, is two bucks in the States, but it's six bucks over here because it's right. an export. I right. felt like a can of Bud Light. Like she appreciated me and she liked me. I was exotic to her. She was exotic to me. I, I learned things from her every day. She makes me laugh every day. And, and she learns things from me. We, we, have, we are like an, an iPhone or an Android and we have totally different operating systems. Mm -hmm. But those operating systems have become things that we, we like about each other. We right. learn shit. We could go to a restaurant and I'm like, you pick. I've never done that before. Mm -hmm. I've never been on a date with a woman where I'm like, okay, you pick. Because yeah. she just knows a bunch of stuff. She fills all my gaps and I fill her gaps. It's, it's, I think it's, also, <laughs> that it's, sounded it's, dirty. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I mean, not bad dirty though. Um, <laughs> I think it's what's interesting too is I, I was a, uh, like I had went out to, um, I did Holland. You know, with oh, you know, cool. they have a big Dutch who I fell in love with a Dutch girl out there, right? And uh oh, wow. and I was back and forth, just running back and forth to I went and did a uh would be the equivalent of a letterman out in uh in Holland it was a show called Raymond is light. It was a serious <laughs> and you and uh, all the comics went out there and did, but and she she was one of the producers and I met her out there 
And you're right. It was just like she was they're just they really take care of their men. It's 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 a yeah. it's a situation where nothing is taken for granted and everything is appreciated. That's um, right. And Dutch girls got fat asses. They got asses like black <laughs> girls. So, um, they do. There is that. Um, but it, it's it, it's an interesting thing how much we um, we we take for granted because relationships and women in the states is everything is so transactional. You know. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, and it being transactional, we get accustomed to it. Um, we had did a podcast where the guy was like, "Yeah, I'm." I'm uh, this guy was saying, "I'm the only guy who goes on a bachelor party, goes to a bachelor party with my friends, and I don't have to call my woman every five minutes to check in, as as if that should happen." You know what I mean? It's like yeah. he felt special, right? How it was just it, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. He thought it was unique that uh, out of all his friends, he was the only one. And I can have my friends and my friend, I can have my friends as well. She wants me to have friends. And, you know, I mean, cause you get some, you get situations where, you know, but to his time, point, it is unique. Just, just given it, the yeah, given where we're at, where we're at. Yeah. 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 But I wonder what is it you think maybe, maybe you know, and uh, not that you're an expert on all the women of Europe, but what is it you <laughs> think sure. that, that in your experience or your, or your viewing over there that makes it different than American women? What, what do you think the big difference is in the dating or the women in general? I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, of coming from two completely different places. Like, I just feel like it keeps it really, really fresh. I mean, of course, there are the cultural things, right? There's going to be, you know, the, the idea of, of, of dating, of being more equal is something that I, I really like. But, the, you know, that there's that old Maya Angelou saying where she said, people don't always remember what you do or say, but they always remember how they made you feel. And I do think in America, women are on the defensive. Whereas I think here, life is just more chilled out. I, I was when surprised. You, when you I, say more defensive, what do you mean? I think women expect our reputation as men in America is that we are predators. Even yeah. even if we're even if we're the good ones, women look at us like a pit bull that's wagging its tail. Oh, you look friendly for now, but you you still have the name pit bull. And I, I think women are like, I think women are on the defensive. Women have their guard up in America in a way that I don't, I don't think it's up, up like that here. Well, or, let me or, ask you this. Or, There's some guys that would say that women are predators, but they're predators yeah, for your yeah. money and for the, you know, the exactly. I agree. women are looking for the come up, you know? Yeah. So I, that would you know, also I, exist. It probably not exist as much over there either, though, just because of divorce laws and stuff that, that are different out there, maybe. You know? You're well, saying because you that, it's, it's less litigious, you're saying. Yeah, I mean, the odds of you losing as much of your... I, I don't think the divorce laws are as crazy as they are here. So it's... You're right, they're not. Marriage, you don't have to worry as much about someone taking all your stuff or just being there just for the finances. Also, they have other stuff. Like, I think people are just better taken care of out there. You got European... Uh, universal you health care. I mean, it That's just right. makes life a little bit easier where people don't have to start cutting each other's throats as much. Not that it doesn't happen out there, but yeah. maybe not to the yeah. level it happens out here in relationships. That's it, man. I think you, I think you, if we were in an escape room, that would have been the candlestick that made the door open right there. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We I didn't realize it. I would I would work with bookers and they'd be like, man, you Americans are crazy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you, you guys just get so worked up. You're, you're like, you ever see a dog that's real nervous and anxious all the time? And then Cesar Milan comes out and says, man, it's not the dog's fault. The owner is making yeah. that dog anxious. And I think our owner, the person holding the leash on the other end of our collar, is our government and yeah. our system. We live way more stressed out in a way where when I'm in Europe, it, it was an experiment, man. It was like a focus group where they were meeting comics from all these different countries. And they could see when all of us dealt with the same stress, us Americans were way more emotional. We're way more stressed out because we do live in a society where it's just accepted that if you get hurt, if you don't have medical care, which most of us comedians don't, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're fucked. You, right. It's like the lottery in reverse. You're going to win. Uh, your prize is going to be losing everything you have instead yeah. of winning everything. And right. they don't have that level of stress here. So yeah. I think I th and I think that that bleeds all the way in to what we're like during our relationships, which to me is when I'm most vulnerable in front of another woman 
I, there, yeah. There's a guard I'll put up with men that I, I, I don't have with women because it's just more intimate. Now, uh, what, talk about a little bit about because I know your 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 ethnic background. Can you talk about that real quick? And then sure. I, I'd like you to talk about how that how that changes. You know, in terms of your you being Americanized and then seeing things in different perspective. Yeah, well, it's funny. My back. I have a Muslim father and a Jewish mother, mm-hmm. and but it, but I've always been one of these people, and I think a lot of people out here have been have been telling me they relate to me where I, I'm an in-betweener. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was born Arab, but you know, they always had that saying, once you go black, you don't go back. It's really, if you're an immigrant, it's once you go white, you don't go back. Once you become too American, Arabs let you know you're too American now. And really? same with East Asian people, same with Indian people. If you become too Westernized, your own people reject you. Mm-hmm. So I came from this culture where, you know, you know, they used to say it in Egypt, the man might be the head of the family, but the woman is the neck. And my mom, my dad was the engine, but my mom was the steering wheel. She right. was, so I loved her and I was a mama's boy. And so respected women, but I came from this kind of old school culture where the thing that made me feel good was a woman treating me like I was the head of the household. I, I was the, I was the head, the man in charge, but things evolved. Like in Europe, I got to relax a lot more. I, I don't feel like this is a new chapter. I feel like this is a new book. Like in, in my life, like I'm a, di- I can't believe how much I'm like back to school, but as an adult. Mm. Now you, you said, you said everything is 50, everything is equal, but do you still feel that, do you still feel that need to be a man? And because everything is equal, do you feel like a man? Yeah, that's an interesting question, man. I think because I'm allowed to chase my dreams, I can use chasing chasing my career dreams is is the thing that validate me and make me feel like a man i'm mm-hmm. also using my friendships because i've hit like the reset button on life mm-hmm. where now i'm out here with a, a i'm learning how to make friends again i'm mm-hmm. learning I, i'm being much more proactive in terms of saying hey man let's hang out sometime because right. I, I started at zero i hit reset in a way that i never thought i was going to hit reset it, you know at al- almost 50 years old i didn't think right. i was going to hit the reset button that late in life but because I have, it's like I'm an immigrant again, but this time I'm an adult. I have eyes wide open. I'm not an Egyptian coming to America where right. I was treated disrespectfully. I'm an American coming to Europe where I'm treated pretty respectfully. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So I think uh, eyes wide open, eyes wide open is what changes it for me. Yeah. Um, it's a weird thing. It's I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking up something on my phone. I want to read something to you real quick. Um, I, I mean, sure. it's just a fat, uh, you know, man, I, I fantasize about going to Europe all the time and you're doing it, which I think is, is phenomenal. But it's just like there's a lot. You have to give up your family. How is that? Yeah. How's that been? Well, I got really lucky, man. I'm an only child and uh, oh, wow. I'm okay. real close. I'm a real, really close with my mom. Uh, my dad had passed away, uh, you know, 10 years back and I'm real close with my mom. So at the Portugal had this program where if you buy a house in Portugal, they give you this thing called a golden visa and mm-hmm. a golden visa gives you all the rights of a European citizen. And then after five years, that visa can turn into a citizenship. So my mom wasn't happy with the way things were going. She was living in Southern California in Huntington beach, which became like a hot spot for, you know, a lot of, yeah, the a lot of you know, uh, MAGA stuff, a lot of the red hat. Exactly. Well, shout out to Tito Ortiz, the greatest politician that, uh, <laughs> Huntington the mayor who quit. The, <laughs> the yeah. mayor who quit after one day. Yeah, so my mom wanted – she was real open to leaving, and I was nervous. I got to be honest, man. I, I, I was worried. You know, she's going to come to Portugal, and what – you know, she doesn't speak the language. What if she comes all the way out here at 73 years old and then hates it? But, man, mm-hmm. she's – she's now she lives an hour away by plane in, just outside Lisbon, and the building she lives in, there's people from France, from Brazil, from Cape Verde, and it's like a family, man. It's, and it's my like- mom is like – is it like an older folks, not a facility, but sometimes they have uh, apartments for older folk? No, just like a regular. Assisted living. No, no, no. Huh? It's a, it's an apartment on the beach. My mom, my mom walked 20,000 steps a day. She's still like, uh, she's a real fit lady. She loves to walk every day. And the people in her building, the first day I felt good was I FaceTimed her and in and she hadn't been answering her phone. I'm like, hey, where you been? She's like, no, no, I know you're on the road. I didn't want to stress you out. I'm like, what's going on? 
And in the background, I see people walking around. I'm like, what's going on? She says, oh, those are my neighbors. Yvonne is over there. She's doing laundry for me. And Jackie, she's making food for me. I'm like, I'm like, why? She's like, oh, I had foot surgery, but I didn't want you to stress out. But my neighbors have come over and they started taking care of me. Wow. Well, I'm cool. like, that also they're, feels they're like, like a very family. European thing. Yeah. That doesn't happen in America. Yeah. Hey, I'm having foot they surgery. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I, exactly. You know, it's good you got her out because, you know, there's, um, I don't know, Harry, did, I don't know if you heard about this, you know, in, in Florida. They're wearing there's do you know about the scrungy thing? The scrunchy? No, what's that? So you know like the 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 nylon loofer? Uh I'm gonna say a loofah. Loofah, yeah, the loofah. Um oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know those things. What yeah, is it looks now? like a scrunchie, but it's a loofah. So there's in a lot of in Florida and a lot of the senior communities. I just sent you something, Harry. Check that out. Read that off when you get it. It to be emailed so it to me or text it. Yeah. Texted it. Okay. So it's a couple of there's loofahs in different colors, right? So um and oh boy, here we go. So <laughs> the, all right, so these these different colors, these loofahs, where would they put these loofahs, if I may? On ask their that on their car antenna. Okay, and this is for the oh, older wow. folks, or this is just everybody? Older, this is seniors. All right, let's start at white, just novice, they're beginners here. If so there's a, got a white you know how loofah. the kids were wearing those little braces, the sex bracelets? So yeah. what they do now is they put the loofers on their car antenna when in Florida and they're doing swap so wife swap. So then purple means you're a, wow. a voyeur and people who like people you're a voyeur and you like to watch just in general. You just don't want to be involved. Pink, it means soft swap, people who like to do it with others in the room. So your couples that you want to do it with other people present to watch. Blue is the lowest level of full swap. Those who play well with others. Yellow is mid-level swap. Okay. Uh, for those who want to have fun but are still nervous. Black, full swap. Those who say, uh, what the hell, let it let it all go. And Anything then my favorite, goes. teal, is uh, bisexual. For those who want to increase their dating chances in the elderly community, the teal. <laughs> wow. That's wild. I did yeah. not know this was going on here in Florida. Of all, this, no wonder people are flocking to Florida as they get older. <laughs> Jesus, they turn it up. That's wild. There's also like a a huge uh, underground Viagra. Um, there's a whole ring. There's a Viagra there's a ring. Old dudes with with Tommy guns. Old to <laughs> Tommy guns. Yeah, see, yeah. You're Pinstripe. not gonna stop this shipment for coming in. See, pinstripe suits <laughs> with spats. <laughs> yeah, man, Viagra changed the game. That yeah, was like that. the old old. Old people version of discovering fire. Yeah. Like it yeah. changed the game. I just like that it's breaking bad, but with old people's Viagra. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah and they're like, call. let's go with the let's go with the colored loofahs. <laughs> <laughs> they could do an old people version called breaking bones. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It just uh and I was just thinking that man, thank God you got your mom out before it's too late. <laughs> yeah, man, exactly. Thank God. Thank God my mom's still a virgin. <laughs> right now, Tamer, the next time he goes over, he's going to start ripping all the loofahs his mom has. Going, you don't need that. You don't need that. What are you Big doing? Mom, you what, are you doing with, what are you doing with this teal? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, man. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting how, you know, culturally, you know, culturally it makes a difference. Um, it's uh, and 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 I, and I, but I think you're right. It's like the the culture of America is litigious and it's transactional, and and you you know we have a lot of dudes. There's a lot of dudes who they call the passport bros, guys who are going to different countries to get women and and whatnot. And then there there's all American women are going. Oh, you oh you can't, you don't have no game. You can't handle us. You get and the, that's right. The reality is, I don't I don't want to. I don't I don't want to fight you to prove you. It's just it's like it's the same thing like with, with comedy. Like I used to do hood rooms and then I stopped doing hood rooms because I don't want to fight you to entertain you. You know, I don't that's right. I don't want to fight you to get what should be the basic bare minimum is yeah. what it amounts yeah. to, whether it's the the audiences or the relationship. You're like, I don't want to have to fight you just so we could have normalcy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It sucks to start at a negative. Remember when you're in school and there was a teacher that said, 
the beginning of the class, the beginning of the semester, she'd be like, everybody has an A and it's yours to keep. Yeah. And you got to do something. You got to do something to fuck it up. It's it's the definition of innocent until proven guilty. You start out with an A. I always love those teachers. And that's what it feels like here. I feel like dating here. I start out with an A and it's mine to keep. Right. Or wow. Or that because that is not the case here. You come into a date exactly. here. You it start is, with a zero. You start you got, with a you zero. Got a you Every, start with an F. That's yours to build up. Prove to me that that you're yeah. not going to treat me like shit, like every other man. Whereas it here, is a like, it is a thumbs up Roman emperor, thumbs up, yeah. thumbs down yes. type of yeah. situation here. Whether oh wow, I never viewed it like that. But yeah, that makes all the sense in the world. What's yeah, interesting about that too is that when you have when you have younger women but they're young and hot and stuff, they have all the power. I, I when you put that down over your eyes, Harry, I was like, why is Jordy here? When did oh. we come to start Star Trek? Oh, sorry, but <laughs> sorry, I had the head, the little headphone piece. I'm adjusting, it's spitting weird today. But um <laughs> it's uh what was I saying? The the, the um it it's a uh, we we're what talking about saying? dating in the U.S. with women and starts at zero. Right. And, so uh, when women, women, when they're young and they're hot and they're, you know, they're smoking hot and they're whatever, they have the all they got the thumbs up and the thumbs down. And then as they as they get older, the power gets transferred over because, you know, there's a there's the biological clock start kicking. And so it's like women have always had. uh uh, they've always been the ones that gave access to sex because we are yeah. pursuant and men have always been gave access to relationships. So, you know, you can, you, if you're a little hot, something you can, you can get sex at will, but can you get a guy to, to marry you? Can you get a guy to stay with you? Is that was our access. And, and it's a weird thing. It's like people don't forget. So I think a lot of times men, um, they were in that situation and maybe they weren't that top 10 percent of guys that everybody wants to fuck. And then all of a sudden, as women get older, they don't have a first of all, we we die quicker. So there's less yeah. men because we die off. Um, and then you have you have these older women who are basically dying alone because they, you know, they were the hot. Ten, nines and tens when they were younger and then as they get older that starts the the, the stocks start to plummet and yeah. then when, and the stocks plummet and you don't have the opportunities and then you have a relationship or have a kid out of wedlock and now it's not going to take you and your kid which is it doesn't it, it's not a benefit to me at all like i don't yeah. i don't even have to do that but then as it as the stocks plummet then the the the, the the power changes and guys remember what they had the, the hoops that they had to jump through when when the power dynamic was different that's right and then you get guys oh okay so now i'm i'm in control now look this is what we yeah. and it's just a weird thing it's just because you find that more over than not people don't approach we they just don't approach each other with, with a level of kindness you know yeah just that's right pretense of kindness and generosity and stuff you nailed like that. it I used to tell my friends, like, I feel when I watch, even when I watch, like, there's a reality show on Netflix right now in Korea called The Hundred. And yeah, it's just Korean. It, yeah. You've seen that show? Do you ever As notice well. how nice they are to each other? Yeah, and I told are. my friend, I'm a, when I watch that show, it's like kindness porn. Yeah. Like, I'm like, look at the, these dudes are able to compete at the highest level, try as best they can to beat the other dude. But at the end, they're so nice. He's like, oh, you know, uh, you know, I tried my best, but he beat me. I hope you go on to win the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And they're respectful and kind. Well, and that's it makes all, me that's feel also hard. that the the overdub is horrible. So they could be saying, yeah. look at this punk. <laughs> I hope he dies. That's but, true. You, but you do, you do see them. They bow. And anytime they, I watch they, any international yeah. shows, you get a different vibe. I, my girl and I. I mean, well, I watch that one, which is a great show to watch. But also, I watch the uh, the whatever dating is blind. Love is blind. And we yeah. watch them internationally. She loves them. So we watched the one in, in Japan, and that is just way different than the one in America yeah. and then the one in Brazil. And, and it's way? just it, there's the drama is just if the relationship works. There is no yeah. like, I don't know if he's a cheater or not. He seems like a player, or this and that. The dr- I think he has a girl. He, has he might a, have he a has girl. A two, he has two kids that, you know. Yeah, man. 
and and there's you just... watch you watch those. Sorry, go ahead. No, no go for it. What do you, what do you got? Well, I, I was just, when I watch those shows, I feel like I'm watching two haunted houses try to date, where people are like, "Oh, th- you got the ghost of your ex boyfriend causing oh, yeah. shit to fall off your wall, and you're yeah. blaming me for dishes breaking." But that's yeah. not me. You're you're swinging at stuff that the ghosts are doing. Whereas mm-hmm. in Europe, I feel like the houses have been exercised. Uh-huh. You, the, the ghosts of the ex-boyfriends aren't there. When I'm dating no. a woman, I, I'm an individual dating an individual. I'm not an individual from team man dating a woman from team woman. And then we bring in all this other drama. Excess baggage. But how, why do you think that baggage doesn't exist out there? Like, why would it not exist? Because I'm trying I, I to like pin to that. Look- to the finances or the healthcare. I don't know. Maybe therapy is the best I can think of. I think, I think that's a big part of it. I think I didn't realize until I had production company after production company tell me, they're like, oh, you're the first American comedian we've worked with that isn't like dramatic. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, really? I'm like, wait, no, because I became friends with some of these cats. And they're like, when, when things go bad for you guys, you guys lose your shit. You don't, this keep calm and carry on which is what England's known for. I think that's influenced all of Europe. We don't have that saying, but if we did, it would be spaz out and get dramatic. We are the opposite yeah. of keep calm and carry well, on. Well, I will also say, because, you know, like you know, my, my lady's from England and, and it's like, it is, they don't lose their shit, but they do lose their shit. So it, yeah. it's hard, but they keep, they. it's always maintain your class, maintain. So, but, But I find also that they are behind that is horrible relationships and horrible parenting. True. Because everything is like, oh, Chibi, oh, keep me, keep a stip up a lip. And and, and there's horrendous, uh, you know, what's that trauma that has been pushed down and not been dealt with. I definitely think that. You know, in America, it's like lose your shit. Like it's fine to lose your shit. I mean, it being being expressive. But I will say this: you, in you know, like when we talk about all the passport bros that go to Thailand and Brazil and they uh, China and they go get women in other countries. Um, even I even guys that I know that have gone, you know, just to, like just to to sleep with hookers. You know, they'll go to another country to go to sleep with hookers. What from what? I think that's wrong. There are plenty of good American hookers who need our business <laughs> here's, and here's deserve gotta, our American by dollars. foreign, Harry. By foreign, always by foreign because fuck locally, yeah, what, fuck whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the local local at the local fair, there's a <laughs> farmer's market right there. You can get some ass right out of the farmer's market. Yeah. Well, but I think whatever guys that I know, friends of mine that I have gone. They always say that the sex is 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 not transactional. Yeah. Like, so if the guys are sleeping with you know sex workers in other countries, yes, there is an exchange of money, but that's not the primary thing. Like, you could, the, I like you, right? I re, first of all, I respect men. I like men. I do like money also, but I wanna. I also want somebody that I like. I, yeah. I mean, not to say that it's, um, you know, that they would choose the guys who, 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 you know, who are they sleeping with for, uh, you know, they wouldn't pick them out of a lineup. But I, but it is like that in a sense. Whereas friends of mine that went to Brazil, like, to, or went to Dominican Republic, like, there's a girl, like, you could pay anybody to, to, to have sex, but there's women that kind of gravitate towards you. And there's women that don't. And so yeah. why would you want to pay somebody who had who didn't even gravitate to you? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's yeah. even though it's transactional, it's there's an element of it. Okay, I would I would I'll take his money. You know what I mean? Sure. And I won't take yeah. his money. So so I, I think it's just sex and 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 I think that goes off into relationships. Like relationships yeah. are transactional. I mean, we're literally looking at in the manosphere, this whole thing with Kevin Samuels and all this stuff where they're going, you know, this, I need a high value man. I need a man that yeah. makes this amount of money. I need a man that this, he has to have this, he has to have that. And then, and, and you're discounting people just on that. And, and here's the thing like, uh, 
Tame is always a good guy. He, as long as I've known, he's always been a kind and a good guy. And we've always kind of got you. along. Um, but one of the things is because I, I really see you as a good guy. And Thank you, there's man. always this thing that where people go, you know, nice guys finish last. And I will say that a lot of nice guys don't make necessarily, they're not, they don't necessarily make the money that shit, shit, shit birds and whatever doo doo boys <laughs> and stuff, <laughs> Cheetos, big yeah. pineapple heads. Um, <laughs> they, they, you know, I think if you're going after that money and that fame, there's a ruthlessness to that. Yeah. But I, I, I agree hundred percent, but I also don't see a lot of happy people. Like, I mean, me and Harry talk about this all the time that, you know, I have a little notoriety as a comic, you know, reputation and so on, but you know, we, we're talking about guys that are making millions of dollars doing stand up. I don't know any of them that are happy. Yeah, yeah, most of them are super miserable. Most They're of them miserable. are yeah. tremendously miserable. There's a you got to do guys, yeah. You know, there's a few guys I think you could kind of feel that they're happy. Like I, I, but most of them are very unhappy. I, I, I mean, I had this thing that I, I put on Instagram that went viral, and I was talking about the whole thing with Will Smith, the the whole slap and the whole thing. Here's a guy mm -hmm. who's in a who's who's worth five hundred million dollars in a household where his wife doesn't love him mm -hmm. and all the cars, all the houses, the mansions, the movies, the money, the residual checks, everything didn't matter because this woman doesn't love you and doesn't respect you to the point That's right. where she, she'll bring your son's, she'll, she's fucking your son's best friend. Yeah. You know, that's right. And my, my thing even with that is like, listen, even if they had an open relationship, why that dude? You know, yeah. why, why, you know, there's something to that in itself. Then also when you, when you, um, so I said, I, I, in this, this post, I don't know if I told you this, Harry, in this, the post I did that went viral, I was like, you know, you, you know, he's, I said, Will Smith's in a, in a, in a, um, infinity pool filled with his tears. Cause he's with a bitch that doesn't love him. Right. Right. And, uh, yeah. And the first, you know, all the critiques I got, all the comments was, why she got to be a bitch? And I'm like, because she's a bitch. Like, so there's mm -hmm. this automatic uh, defense of somebody who is unkind, manipulative, unscrupulous. You, you, I mean, like, I mean, how do you... <laughs> you know, can you imagine your mom is fucking your best friend? You know, like... Just wild. That wasn't even cheating. That was a revolutionary act. That yeah, was her yeah. version of an insurrection. That was her <laughs> taking his power, disrespecting yeah. him, smearing shit on his wall, yeah. saying, I, you're, you're, you are not a man to me. I don't respect you. Yeah. And, and women do that sometimes. There are women who do that that are like, hey, I, I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going to show how you much how much I don't how, respect you. That's it. Yeah. That was an that was an almost an artistic revolutionary act on her part. That wasn't a, a natural part of a relationship. That was a yeah. statement. Yeah, this is the Nazarene with shit on it. You know what I mean? It's like really, <laughs> that's right. That's it's, right. It's really uh yeah, I I it's it's interesting you say it like that, but it's just like going and then and then I you know I've talked about the 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 Johnny Depp thing. And then his mm. Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow got shit in his bed. Like he literally had a chick <laughs> shitting in his bed. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thing, especially when we're talking about equality and feminism and, and stuff, which is also interesting that um, I was reading this article about how Cosmopolitan, you know, the lady who wrote Cosmopolitan, which kind of, created feminism as as it exists now which is you know if we talk about feminism that women should get what they what they deserve in in uh money and 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 stuff like that i mean yeah you, you, that that's not controversial but what you talk about is they were talking about how cause the lady who wrote cosmopolitan actually apologized because she said we created these and we don't i also don't think that there's such a digital age that we don't even realize how much that affected relationships and women and, and, and gender, because, 
you know, you, I mean, because everything's so digital, we could never think that a magazine would would change people's thinking. But the problem is, you got to go back to a time when, I mean, I mean, when they talk about Play Playboy being revolutionary in in the in the sexual revolution, I mean, I, I think young people don't understand if it's not a if if it's not somebody going viral, they don't even understand that magazine was the that was the internet, you know. That's right. That was that was a Playboy was the I mean, uh, what you call it? Hugh Hefner was the first dude that brought um, did a did a black did a Dick Gregory. He interviewed Dick Gregory. And had Dick Gregory perform That's at right. the Playboy club. Like it was, this stuff was revolutionary. I mean, even him yeah. doing layouts of black women like Pam Greer and stuff like that. So. Um, but they were talking about how cosmopolitan created this facade where their their brand of feminism wasn't really about equality of women, it was about being a shitty man as yeah. opposed to being a an equal woman. And now we're in That's this right. situation where you're trying to act like I, I just I just you know, um, Harry, let's wrap this and then we'll put this behind the Patreon before we. Yeah, let's go, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202. If yeah, you want to uh, so pl plug your stuff, bro. OK, we'll do. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Instagram is where I post most of my stuff at Tamer Cat. It's T-A-M-E-R-K-A-T. -E oh, and my website is great for like upcoming tours, things like that. I'm doing a bunch of music festivals in England. It's at TamerKatan.com. Harry. And uh, as I was saying, you could uh, join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do the bonus content. Uh, and we're going to continue our conversation with uh, with Tamer. And we're going to probably answer at least one listener mail question because I've had this one for a while. Uh, but also my stuff is on uh, uh, YouTube and TikTok at Harry Turjanian. And I also do relationship consultation. So email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I like thanks, that you buddy. do that. Uh, Just trying to help you. Y'all want me, uh, you know how to get me, da the Dante Nero, or Google me, bitch. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the, if you want consultations, DanteNero.com, click on consult. Don't forget to follow the Patreon. Please, please, please support us on the Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Really appreciate that. It helps us keep it doing. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? <laughs> the sexual revolution is being podcasted. Let's get on the Patreon side. Peace.